Well, hello and welcome to this Ash Wednesday service. Plans have changed a little bit. We're spending it here at home as, uh, as are you at your own homes. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining us for worship uh, today. Um, this service marks the beginning of Lent. It is a season of prayer and fasting. Uh, repentance and forgiveness Yay. as we journey with Christ to the cross and then celebrate his victory over sin and his resurrection um, which is a promise of our resurrection uh, if you're able to uh, download a copy of the bulletin there should be a link in the description of the video um, uh, you can follow along in there otherwise we will also put uh, words and things on the screen. Um, we will begin with our call to worship. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have, all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 266 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Heal Us, Emmanuel, Hear Our Prayer. We'll be singing along with the uh, recording provided by Charles Elmer Zabo at Zabo Music on YouTube. One day, Jesus called his twelve apostles and gave them power and authority to cast out demons and heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to everyone about the coming of the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Don't even take along a walking stick, he instructed them, nor a traveler's bag, nor food, nor money, not even an extra coat. When you enter each village, but a guest is a guest in only one home if the people of the village won't receive your message when you enter it 
Shake off its dust from your feet as you leave. It is a sign that you have abandoned that village to its fate. So they began their circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. And our second scripture comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the Beautiful Gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently and Peter said look at us the lame man looked at them eagerly expecting a gift but Peter said I don't have any money for you but I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth get up and walk then Peter took a, the lame man by the right hand and helped him up and as he did the man's feet and ankle bones were healed and strengthened he jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into temple, into the temple with him. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out to Solomon's colonnade, where he was holding tightly to Peter and John, everyone stood there in awe of the wonderful thing that had happened. If you have the bulletin uh, on the back, is a place for you to take notes during the message. If you would, uh, if you would find that if beneficial. If you will find it, thank you. <laughs> thank you, little carrot. These two passages take us full circle from Jesus' instructions to seeing them acted out. Jesus said, take nothing with you. So Peter and John had nothing to give this beggar except the power of God. If they had money or extra clothes, they might have given those things instead. As we enter the Lenten season, we are reminded to take nothing with us. This is a season commonly marked by fasting in order to spend time in prayer and seeking God. It is modeled after Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness before the start of his ministry and the Israelites' 40 years of wandering in the desert because of their sin. Therefore, it is a time to acknowledge and repent of our sin so that we can stop wandering and be prepared to and to be sent out to participate in the ministry of Christ. So what do you carry with you that needs to be left behind in this season? That could be physical, emotional, and or spiritual baggage. Spend some time this Lenten season considering those things and asking God to help you leave those behind so that you can focus on using the resources God has given you for building the kingdom. What do you offer to neighbors in need of healing or assistance? Most of us send a card or perhaps give money or meals or other resources that we have. But what if God has given you the power to heal that neighbor and share with them the power and the grace of Christ? We don't know because we haven't been focused on the earth. We have been focused on the earthly possessions that we can share instead of the eternal healing that we can offer. Carolyn Moore wrote, The spiritual principle is this give what God gives you. Every day, go out and pour out what God pours in. Lay hands on people, pray, call down the power of God. That costs nothing except a little pride, and you probably have a little of that to spare. 
I know that we aren't supposed to lay hands on people these days, but Jesus and his disciples touched all kinds of people and healed them of their diseases without getting sick themselves. If we are doing the will of God, then we can't focus on germs. We have to be focused on Christ and his healing power. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't wash our hands or wear a mask. It just means that we can and should still offer the power of God in these days. If that is our goal, God will figure out the details. More continues. When the disciples went, they could not completely understand the why behind Jesus' instructions. But by the time they had returned from that first missionary journey, they were convinced. They had seen the power of God overshadow any physical comforts they may have had or shared. Now that Jesus had ascended and the apostles were serving on their own, they had owned Jesus' teaching. That was how they rolled. They had learned to offer nothing but the power of God. They understood themselves as walking vessels of the kingdom, and they appreciated the treasure of that. Yes, sometimes funds and stuff are exactly what's needed, but much more often the relationship is the real treasure. Do you understand that you are a walking vessel of the kingdom? Do you appreciate the treasure of that? If not, this is the season to work through that. Work through the earthly things that keep you from fully partnering with the Holy Spirit's work in the world. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made from dust. How amazing is that? And you've been given a unique personality with unique gifts to be used as only you can for the glory of God to build the kingdom. So use this season to figure out what that means for you, specifically for this year, because we'll go through this season again next year. You don't have to put down long-term goals just for right now. What has God given you, and how are you to use those gifts with God's power and authority to proclaim the gospel, cast out demons, heal the sick, and set the captive free? As is our tradition on Ash Wednesday, we will, uh, in a moment, be uh, receiving, praying over and receiving the ashes. Um, if you were on my mailing list, you should have received in the mail um, an ash cross tattoo. <laughs> uh, I invite you to get those out now and also a, a wet wipe or a wet paper towel or some kind of wet cloth um, to transfer that. Um, if you don't have one of these, I do have extra. If you'd like one, you can get in touch with me uh, and I'll get one to you. Uh, or you can use whatever ashes you have mixed with a little bit of whatever oil you have. Um, olive oil is significantly appropriate um, and there are some other um, essential oils as well that could be um, significantly appropriate. Anything meant for um, healing, um, health and wholeness. Um, and that kind of thing. Um, if you have a fireplace or a charcoal grill, uh, you might find some ashes there. Um, or, you know what? You could even sweep your floor and use the dust you sweep up. I know that's a little gross. Willow's making a face from behind the camera. Uh, but that's the point. We are made from the dust of the earth. And to dust we will return. Um, but Jesus loved us, dust that we are, enough to take on human form, take on the consequence and the pain of all our sin, and die on the cross so that we can be forgiven and have life. Um, so if you would like to pause the video now uh, to get whatever it is you need, whether it's tattoo and a, a wet cloth um, or some 
dust and some oil uh, to mix with it. A little bit of oil, very little bit of oil goes a long way with, with those ashes. So um, however you're mixing that, um, just a drop <laughs> is all you need. So pause the video now and we'll see you back in a few moments. Okay. Mom. We, yes, dear. Okay. It's okay, you won't need that. Wow. Um, hear these words of invitation, which remind us of the reason we observe this season. This comes from the B Book of Worship, page 322. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observe, observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. So hear those words. This is the time of preparation. We have a confirmation class that will begin, be beginning and um, preparing our students throughout this season for, uh, for confirmation and membership in the church um, and baptism if they have not been baptized. And if you have been away from the church or never been a part of the church, this is a, a time for reconciliation um, to the church family. And um, so get in touch with me and we can talk about more uh, what that means, if you would like. Um, I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ. Let me say that again. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our moral nature, let us now bow before our Creator and remember in silent repentant prayer. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of, your, of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. So, as we uh, impose the ashes, uh, I would uh, caution you that if you have one of the temporary tattoos, it is temporary, but um, you may want to choose to place it on the back of your hand as it uh, should stay on <laughs> for a, a few days. Um, so you can either uh, impose your ashes on your forehead um, or on the back of your hand. Um, and uh, so go ahead and do that now. If you have ashes, you can make the sign of the cross dip your thumb or finger in those ashes and make the sign of the cross on your hand or your forehead and go ahead and place your your tattoo where you'd like it um, and cover it with a wet cloth I'll be mine here as you're holding that wet cloth on your tattoo, uh, repeat these words uh, with me. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent and believe the gospel. We'll say it one more time. 
Remember that you are dust, and to dust and you, will return. you will return. Repent, Repent and believe, and the believe gospel. in the gospel. And there it is. We said that three times uh, because it took that long to transfer the tattoo, but also um, because it reminds us of Jesus pard pardoning Peter. Um, when he asked him three times if he loved Jesus, um, and and he said to him, "Go and take care of, and uh, go and feed my sheep." Um, will you join me in the hymnal on page 785 in this prayer of confession using Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17? Um, we'll pause where indicated for uh, we'll pause where indicated for the sung responses page 785 um, and we'll be up here for the responses just a moment okay do you need to turn to page 785 in the hymnal please? Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly with my inequity and cleanse me from your my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. We'll sing the response at the top of the page. The response number two first. Create in me a clean heart. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Ask me not away. 
Let us offer ourselves. 